Hi, my name is Stacy Anderson Diaz. <laughs> I guess I'm boring him. <laughs> We travel all over the United States performing with our horses as a family. We live in New Braunfels, Texas, here at the Diaz Ranch. Roman riding, I've been doing since I was five years old. My dad had a Wild West show, and we traveled all over the United States. I did Roman riding close to 20 years. And now what I have is the Azteca horses, and I do the Roman riding, I do a four up of the beautiful Aztecas that you see here today. They are part of my team. I do Roman riding and they are a big part of what I do. Here on the Diaz Family Ranch, we would not think of not having say whoa. I've actually lost count how many times we've actually used it, but every time we've used it, we've had tremendous results. I have used say whoa late at night and then begin to think, Oh my gosh, I don't have another bottle. I have to wait till the next day to get some. And I hope all the horses stay healthy until I can get another bottle. These horses are not only horses that we just perform with. These horses are our family. We would absolutely do anything to take care of our horses. Matter of fact, when we're traveling, they are taken care of before we ever get to go eat or to the hotel. <laughs> If you have horses and you were raised around having animals, you know how devastating it is to lose an animal to colic. And to, to have that peace of mind knowing that my horses, I have something, their first line of defense when they are colicking, um, it just really makes me feel good that we have that product. We would not be without the Say Whoa product. We firmly believe that is our first line of defense. And these are not just animals to us, these are our family. All right, we're going to be talking about uh, the digestive tract and how it works so you have a good understanding about colic. We're going to go through each part from the part where they eat all the way to the other end and then you can see how we can help prevent them having colic. Something that's abnormal going on in the digestive tract. And when we're talking today, we're going to talk about it's like a thousand pound horse, 15 hands tall. And that's gonna be, when we're talking about measurements throughout, that's what we're gonna base this on. First, with the teeth. They need strong, healthy teeth to chew their food because that's where the first digestion actually happens. They're chewing their food and it lets the digestive juices come in and start breaking it down right there. Well, what happens is the horse often develop points on the outside of their molars. So during your vet exam, he'll check for sharp points there because when it goes, it starts roughing it up on the inside of the mouth and actually can cut the horse's mouth. And that's why he's dropping his feet. So if he's having problems chewing his food, then he's not really grinding it down so the digestive enzymes can go in and attack the plant cell wall. Your horse, by chewing, has three pairs of glands that produce saliva. Do you know in one day a horse can produce up to 10 gallons of saliva? That's 85 pounds of saliva a day. And what it does is mix with the feed to make a moist bolus so it can be easily swallowed. Whenever a horse swallows something and it goes down the esophagus and it's going to the stomach, there's a cardiac sphincter and that's a strong muscle. And the way it enters the stomach is an oblique angle and that keeps the, the stomach from throwing up. Maybe you gave the horse a little moldy hay or something. He'll pick through that and usually if they're out in the open pastures, he won't eat it. But if he's in a pen, he'll eat that. And whatever he eats has to go all the way through and out the other end because they can't throw up because of the strong muscle. And that could be a problem later on. That could also predispose him to colic. Another thing is the stomach. It's just four gallons. So it's a relatively small for the horse's size. Out in the natural with grazing all day, it can stay up into the stomach for 24 hours. And this is where the full digestion takes place. 
Though now we domesticated the horse and keep them in pens, we're just able to feed them twice a day those heavy meals. Whenever the stomach is over two thirds uh, full, it's gonna empty out whether full digestion has taken place or not. So if you feed them over two gallons, you're looking at it emptying out within 15 minutes sometimes. So the full digestion haven't broken down that food enough, so then it goes through really readily through the digestive tract. It's gonna start getting stopped in different ways, especially if he's ate a lot of dry stuff. What happens after it empties out, it's gonna go next into the small intestine. And there's a, a, a strong sphincter muscle called a pyloric valve, and that's what's gonna say how much is coming from the stomach into the small intestine. The small intestine is 50 to 70 feet in length and holds 10 to 12 gallons. This is the main absorption of all the carbohydrates that it takes and it, it takes it into the bloodstream and go to wherever the horse needs it, the nutrients in the body. What keeps going on through then is your roughages, like your hay, your beet pulp. So it stays in the small intestines from 30 to 60 minutes and then it moves on where it goes into next is called the cecum. A cecum is a large pouch, about four foot long, and where the small intestines bring it in, okay, and to where it goes out again, that also can lead to problems just because of the structure, how it's made. In this, is kind of like a big microbial sac, and it stays in there from seven to eight hours, and it contains seven to eight gallons, and that's, it's a microbial fermentation vat. Now these microbes are very specific and they create enzymes for that specific feed that you've been feeding. They're very slow to modify and slow to change. So if suddenly you make a rapid feed change like giving alfalfa and you'd been given like Timothy hay, they have to adapt to that. So they are not going to digest it as good as they should have. After the cecum, it goes back up through and now we're going into the large colon. The large colon is 10 to 12 feet in length and holds 20 gallons. It's very large. And what it does is have many twists and turns, and it keeps going through until the small colon. Now where it makes twists, it has uh, some twists, it's called the pelvic um, flexure, and where it's actually a larger diameter, twisting around and going to a smaller diameter. This is where most impaction cases happen. And the main job that people need to know of the colon is that it rehydrates the horse and but it pulls all the moisture out of the feed that's left and uh, up the waste matter. And this is what makes your fecal balls. Now when you have an apaction and it's stopping there, the colon keeps doing its job. It keeps pulling out and pulling out till actually this substance is now adhering to the mucosal lining. Now how does say woe actually work? What it does, as soon as the horse drinks it down, it's absorbed through the lining right into the bloodstream. And what it does, instead of making its way all the way to the impaction site, the blockage that's causing all the gas and everything to build up and the blockage, what it does is it tells the horse's body through the bloodstream, through osmosis, to put all that body fluids back into the colon. So not only is it coming back in, it's rehydrating the mucosal lining that it, now that blockage is adhering to, and it goes in, it supples that out, and it penetrates the impaction. It floods it with the body fluids, the natural body fluids of the horse, breaking it down, it has an ionic solution and it's all natural and that stimulates the muscles with peristalsis to help eliminate and move that on out of the horse's system. That is how Say Whoa works and goes in and actually solves the problem. Not just kills the plane, not just relaxes muscles, you need those muscles working to eliminate that colon impaction. Hi, my name is Reba. I'm here to help you get a good understanding about what colic is, maybe some signs and symptoms, what causes colic, and how you know your horse may have this problem. A very easy way that you can start out with is go to your horse and see what he looks like normal. Then you'll know if anything abnormal in the future is happening, you'll be right on top of that. And what you could do is listen for gut sounds. This is a number one thing of colic, is the gut sounds start diminishing because the gut is actually stopped and everything is kind of piling up and you have an impaction. So where you go is you go towards a little bit before the flank and listen upper, 
and lower quadrant. And then on the other side, the upper and lower, you should hear gurgling sounds. And if you do this on your horse when he's normal, you'll kind of know what to look for if you see him being in a little bit distress and you can kind of work with him then. How you know this if you go out and, and you're looking at your horse, one of the main things on colic is your horse goes up to feed, he sniffs at it and walks away and does not eat. If you have a horse that's not eating, that is a horse that has a problem. You may also see him laying down. That's one of the symptoms of signs of colic. And the reason they lay down is they don't have hands to kind of press their, you know, hands against their belly to help relieve the pain. They're pressing it against the ground to help relieve the pain a little bit. You can see him pawing. Another thing is he may be reaching back and looking back towards his stomach area, and yes, that would be a sign of colic too. Another thing is check the temperature. Normal is about 100. It can be a little bit up or a little bit lower than that, but 100 is pretty much about right there on the mark. And then another way you can check a vital sign is his breathing. This is very important because a horse usually in a whole minute will do 10 to 14 breaths. When you have a horse that's in distress, he'll do 10 to 14 breaths within like 15 seconds maybe a breath for every second. And you can see by the nostrils when they're flaring. You can see how that works that way. Colic is very prominent in horses. And we see this on the weather changes when it's like a really hot day going into a very cold day and it drops about 20 degrees. He just doesn't feel that thirsty the next day. So he's not drinking as much water as he needs to make everything flow. You may even went on a trail ride or hauled him in the trailer. And even when he comes to a new place and he smells the water, it may smell just a little bit different to him and he doesn't drink up the way he should. So the number one problem with colic is dehydration in your horse that causes everything to slow down and actually when it's making the turns to stop. Say whoa, this is what you need on your shelf for when you first notice your horse being in distress. Use always as your first defense and not your last hope. Hi, my name is Reba and I'm with Say Whoa. And I believe that every horse owner needs this sitting on their shelf. This helps with horses in distress with impactions and how it works as soon as they drink it. It goes into the stomach lining, gets right into the bloodstream, and it tells the horse through osmosis it needs to put all the body fluids back into that colon, which disintegrates, it breaks apart, that impaction, and then what it does, it has an ionic solution that actually stimulates the muscles, the smooth muscles that helps assist with peristalsis to move all of that debris right on out. And this works so quickly, within 30 minutes, you should be hearing the gut sounds return. Within one or two hours, it's like nothing ever happened. Say Whoa is a revolutionary product. It does what the other remedies don't. Like the NSAIDS drugs for the past 50 years, that's a pain reliever and a muscle relaxer. Go in your common sense corner. Let's think about this. Don't you need the muscles, the smooth muscles with peristalsis to help push things on through? And if you have a muscle relaxant, don't the muscles just relax and kind of just be there? Also, and if you have a pain reliever that you're giving the horse, ah, you think you're out of trouble. Everything is fine, but to later have all the distress return within one or two hours. And it doesn't work quickly with the mineral oil that has to work its way all the way into the paction and try to help it slither on through with the oiliness. No, what you need is to go in there and break apart that impaction so then the ionic solution can work those smooth muscles to eliminate it because you're working with a true blockage. The product Say Whoa well is made right here in Texas. It is all natural. It will do no harm. You can give it to brood mares. We give it to foals because it's all natural ingredients in it. Through the years, we have had many horses. And what happens is as soon as we, we would see them in distress, we'd load them in the trailer, take them to the vet right away. And what the vet did with the muscle relaxants and the oil, it wouldn't save them and we've lost many of horses. And so through all those years of losing so many horses, there had to be some formulation that would actually go in and solve the problem. And in 50 years of using the same thing that's always on the market and the vets always use, 
Why hasn't there been a breakthrough? There is something out there now, and every horse owner needs this on their shelf. What does it cost to have a vet come out and look at your horse? Five, $500, a thousand? Does it cost you surgery? Or did it ultimately cost you your horse's life? You use this product as your first defense, not your last hope. What I like about Say Whoa, well, it is so easy to give. Very nice. All you have to do is put it in the horse's mouth. They kind of drink it down. And here's what you do. You just pop the top. It comes with an oral dosing syringe. There's your instruction sheets. And what it, on your, your dosages for the horse, if they're over 100 pounds, you feed half the bottle. If they're 100 and over, which most horses are, you just give them the whole bottle. And this is your oral dosing syringe. And you just open it right up. Take the little top off, and you take your bottle that's in here and you shake it down. Shake it up a little bit, and you pour it right in the cup. Ah, oh, it smells like molasses and peppermint in it. It has such a good smell, your horses drink it right down, and pour all the contents right in there. You can even add a little bit of water to the bottle, shake it up, and add the rest of the contents if you'd like. Now, this is 120 cc's or milliliters in this bottle and you have 60 cc syringe or milliliters. Now, instead of taking two big syringes to put it in your horse's mouth, that makes it go way back at the end. And if you would flip his head up, oh, that may pop out and you, you lose your product. So we recommend you break it up into three or four different uh, amounts until the whole mixture is gone. So you just put your tip in and, and just bring it back out. And then it's ready to go in the horse's mouth. And what you can do as you're coming up to the horse, you can actually put your finger in the corner of his mouth and see how they open their mouth like that? <laughs> so when Larry comes with the syringe, he'll kind of know, hey, he's letting that syringe in. And you're going to put it deep in his mouth, in the corner of his mouth, and lift his head up, and he'll just drink it right down. Oh, yes, the taste is great for him. He loves the taste, and he'll be ready for the next couple of syringes. Oops till all the bottles gone. So you'll be giving a whole bottle to a guy this size. 